Happy Monday, Floss Tube. Hello, crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? Happy Monday. It is Monday, December the 28th. My name's Caroline. Welcome back, Daily Crafty Chat. And uh, it is the 28th of December. 28th of December. I always love these last few days of the year. They're a really, there's just that special feeling in those last few days before the calendar flips the page to a fresh start. And um, so, yeah, I've been spending a lot of time over the last couple of days thinking about, you know, plans for the new year and, uh, you know, anyways, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. I have a few other things that I wanted to talk about first, and then I'll get to what I've been working on and plans or not plans as it were. So I had a giveaway last Saturday um, for some fabric, some really beautiful fabric, blue even weave that was sent to me by Nova Scotia Bob. And I, before I started recording today, I used the YouTube random comment uh, generator and I think I had over 220, 210 to 220 uh, unique comments with the word blue. That was the, that was the one I was looking for. And the YouTube random comment generator did its thing and chose So congratulations Celtic Stitcher 17. Now, Celtic or Celtic? I have heard both in the last couple of weeks. And for me, my entire life, I have always said Celtic. And now I'm questioning whether or not I have been saying it incorrectly my entire life because I am not Celtic, Celtic. But the, the sports team, they're called the Celtics, aren't they? So perhaps it is Celtic. And it's just another one of those Caroline things. I've probably been saying it wrong my whole life. Um, so let me know whether it's a, a sibilant soft C or a hard C. Because I've always said CelticHobbies.com. Claire's never corrected me. Maybe she's too nice. <laughs> not that you're not nice. I'm asking for correction here if I'm wrong. So somebody fill me in. All right. So congratulations to you. I'm sorry. I don't know your first name, but if you um, as soon as you see this, if you could please message me, uh, caroline at evertote.com, that would be great. So, uh, just another word about messaging me. Um, I know, uh, for, for those of you who know, I am, I have a retreat planned for next year. Originally, we had it booked for September of this year. That retreat, it's called Stitch North. It was postponed until April, 2021. And um, I, you know what, we're at the end of December, we're almost in January. I think I, I'm, I'm okay, let's say I'm 85% sure that that retreat is going to be postponed again. Um, I, I still think that uh, the end of April, beginning of May is still just going to be just a little bit too soon. However, I would like to wait another uh, few weeks just before making that final decision. However, I have started receiving some messages from people who are requesting refunds, which is totally fine. Um, that was all part of the original um, retreat, retreat registration information deal was that um, I offer a full refund uh, well up until, I can't remember the exact T uh, timing of the thing, but I think it was until the end of January. Um, it was 100% no questions asked. You want a refund, you get your money back. The only issue is that very small in if you paid originally back in March of 2020, if you paid in March, beginning of March for your retreat and you paid via PayPal, there will be a small Fee. I think it's in between four and five dollars Canadian when I return the money to you because uh, we are past PayPal has a six month cutoff for refunding money where they won't return their fees they so when you paid for your retreat originally via PayPal PayPal charges me a small percentage of that fee so I pay a little percentage on the money that you send me 
PayPal's operating costs. Um, and so uh, that fee, if I'm within the six months, that fee is refunded. But past six months, it's not refunded. And so I'm out that little bit of money. And when I have to return the money via PayPal to you, there is another extra little charge going back the other way. So I'm happy to accept the original um, small loss of the fee on the original payment that was paid back in March if, if it's okay if I pass the other small returning fee via, from PayPal back to you um, on any of those refunds. So if, if you have booked a spot in the right in the retreat and you um, would like your money back, that's totally fine. Please email me, caroline at evertote.com. If I could please ask that you not message me on Facebook Messenger or Instagram. I have two Instagram accounts. You can find me there at Off the Grid Needle Arts and also at Evertotes. It gets very, very confusing when there are messages from multiple people coming through and if we're not a, if we're not connected I don't get notifications that you have sent me a message and so often I will completely miss it so please the easiest way to go about it is to email me caroline at evertote.com and even then if I haven't responded to you in a timely manner please email me back because there's always the issue of, did it make it through my, my spam filter, you know, or did it get trapped somewhere else? Or um, it just got mixed in with a whole bunch of YouTube notifications. But, you know, I, I, it's just me answering all of these, you know, comments and questions. So um, it would be really helpful if you could just please email me, caroline at evertote.com. And again, um, if I haven't responded to you within a few days, please message me back. I, I really... Um, it's important to me that I get back to you uh, as soon as I can. So uh, if the retreat is postponed, and again, like I said, 85% sure it's going to be postponed again, I am more than happy to reserve your spot. It's definitely going to happen. I am determined it's going to happen. Um, it's just exactly when that's the question. I am more than happy to keep your spot if you're willing to still remain flexible. You have paid for your spot. There will be no increase in the fee if you've already paid and re reserved your spot. The registration fee will most likely go up for new registrations. Um, I, I'm not sure. It depends. There are some, the food costs are definitely going to be higher um, when we when we finally get together. The food costs will be slightly higher. There's a pizza party on the Friday night. So I'll need to factor in a few extra little small costs for the new registrations. But I'm going to honor if, if you're keeping your registration spot. I have all of the registration money set aside. I haven't touched it since March. It's all set aside in a separate account. It's safe. So if you want it back, just message me and I'm more than happy to refund your money. If you paid via uh, credit card, Visa or MasterCard through my Shopify site, there shouldn't be any issues with the refund. That so far, even though it's past six months, I've had a couple of those that I've been able to just refund automatically and it hasn't, uh, hasn't been a problem. Uh, so I think, and again, if you have any questions about any of this, the where is the retreat? Maybe you're wondering, where is this magical retreat that you're talking about? I live in London, Ontario, Canada, and Stitch North Retreat has been booked. Um, it's it's very close to Toronto, Ontario, in a in a, a suburb of the city called Brampton, at uh, the Courtyard Marriott in Brampton, Ontario, Canada. And at the moment, the retreat is booked for the very last weekend in April, uh, first couple first two days of May, uh, 2021. And then um, if we postpone again, we'll we'll just have to you know take a look at the state of current events when when I am talking about rebooking it but it is going to happen because I think we all need we all need a big party at some point but when it's safe to do so so uh okay so again any questions please email me anytime caroline at evertote.com and if I've missed your message once again please message me back and I will apologize if if I have missed a message uh, from you. Okay, so I have um, a little bit of crafting to share with you from the last couple of days. I, 
you know, I had, I've had a pretty nasty headache for Boxing Day and yesterday. So I actually spent a fair bit of Boxing Day in bed. And it wasn't because I had too much Christmas cheer the night before. I'm not, I'm not really a big, a big drinker. Um, but, you, you know, one or two and <laughs> I get even chattier. So you can imagine. Uh, I just had, I just had this headache that would not go away. And those are unusual for me. I am very fortunate that I do not suffer from uh, migraines or headaches. And my husband does. And so... I know how lucky I am that I don't. So when I do get a headache like that, it really is, uh, it, it, it knocks me out. So I did, um, I did go to bed for half a day on Saturday. So I didn't have as much time as I wanted to do the crafting that I had planned, but I did do some. So I worked on my sock. This is my Timber Yarns 12 Days of Christmas striped sock. And look at that. I got the heel in. The heel flap is completely done. And now I'm working on my gusset decreases. So I went with the red mini. This came with a red mini or a brown mini. And I chose the red because they are Christmas socks. And <clears throat> excuse me, because I do such a long heel flap, I always have a lot of stitches to decrease in the gusset. So that's why my stripes in the beginning part of the foot are going to be one or two uh, rows shorter than, than the other stripes. And I've just popped a couple of stitches off my needle here. So I'm going to rescue those before I go any further because I hate picking up these tiny stitches. There. All right. But isn't it cute? It's so so cute. Sarah uh, gave me a manicure a couple days ago. So my nails look nicer than usual. <laughs> but oh, I just love this sock. I love it. So that was really fun. I find knitting for me when, you know, you're trying to sit and watch television with a family or, you know, my father-in-law has been over more than usual so there's been a lot of you know chit chat at the sitting at the table and um and whatnot so i just find this is very easy to be able to just sit there and work on and still be a part of the conversation so again that's timber yarns they are a local to me in ontario canada dyer a little indie dyer beautiful beautiful self-striping sock yarn I, I can't tell you enough good things about their yarn. So this was a twin sock, which means that it comes in two skeins that are both um, matching. So you can make matching socks. And the uh, Heather, the dyer, is, is really just a, a pro at self-striping sock yarn. My Leo and Roxy sock is still no closer to the heel than it was the last time I shared it. So hopefully now that I've got the one heel in the first sock, once I've done the gusset decreases, I'm going to move over to my Leo and Roxy sock and get that one past the heel. The other thing that I worked on was Savon. And if you follow me on Instagram, uh, at off the grid needle arts, or, um, you're part of the Facebook group Friday off the grid, then you will have seen uh, this already. I did share it yesterday, my progress and where I was. So I'm in that last quadrant and I, I'm, 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 I'm doing some borders. So I've done this borders complete and now I'm going to work and I'm going to complete the outer border so that then really all I have to do is, is that fill in. So this is, Savon, S-E-V-A-N, by Landmark Tapestries and Charts. I'm working this on a 16 count off-white Ada with the called for DMC floss. Now I wrote back to Claire, Claire Crawford this morning of CelticHobbies.com and uh, those are, that's really the only place I've been able to see that you can find these charts to purchase. 
and I messaged Claire, I, I emailed Claire back this morning about her generous donation to Muscular Dystrophy Canada last week and I wanted to let her know that uh, I know I had said I'm only doing two new big starts next year but I can't not have one of these on a frame. So once Savon is done, I will be choosing the next one that I would like to stitch and I'll be putting it on a frame and I'll be starting it. The, I started this one was either early, I think I started it in 2017, but it wasn't until early 2018 that I really, um, you know, put more than just a couple of stitches into the border, the first border and really started it. So 2018, I think it was February and I think I did it in a stitch with me video way back, way back then. I'll see if I can find that stitch with me video and link it down below just for fun so that you can see what it looked like in its beginning stages. And, um, so I've mentioned before that I've done five others of these of this set. It's from the Tapesta Pillow Collection. There are 12 designs. Well, there are six designs in the series. And then the original six have been duplicated in a completely different colorway. Um, so I've already stitched five of them. This is the sixth one that I'm stitching. And uh, they are... Where was I going with this? Where was I going with this? Now I can't remember. Oh yes, timing. How long they take me to stitch. Before I started recording floss tube videos, <laughs> before I started a project bag business, I could stitch one of these in about a year. And I'm, I've am i never, ever been a monogamous crafter. So I've always had multiple projects on the go. Um, but I could, I could finish one in about a year. But now uh, it's just, I have more projects you know, whips in the, in the pile, in the stash pile. And also, um, I, I do a lot of sewing for my, my business. So that's Evertote, um, Evertote.com. I make a lot of bags and I, I work a lot because I love what I do. So I do complete a lot of things, but they tend to be a lot of sewing projects. So to, to say that I started this in really beginning of 2018, seems like a really long time doesn't it but that's okay that's okay I'm good with it when I think back when I look back upon my long crafting history there's one project that sticks out in my mind as I was completely focused on doing nothing but that piece and it was my um Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs, the one that's hiding behind my gigantic Christmas tree. So that, I stitched that in six months. And that really stands out at me, that project, because I just, when I, when I, when I had free time to craft, that's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to do anything else. And that's rare for me to have a project that really um, brings me in like that. But, uh, yeah, so who knows? So I did, I, getting back to Claire, all the way back around to Claire, I messaged her and I said, so I'm, I'm getting ready to start thinking about uh, the next one that I would like to, to start. So possibly you may want to order in a few extra copies to have in your shop because uh, there may be one or two other stitchers who might be interested in joining along with me when I, when I start it up. So but uh, I, I haven't chosen which one I want to do yet. I already have them. I have them in my stash. I've, I've owned them for the last 10, 12 years. I bought all of the charts that I wanted to stitch and the Ada, um, 16, 16 count off-white Ada. I bought it all at the same time. And my uh, friend Kathy, who was the owner of my local needlework shop at the time, Thread and I, she pre-cut all of the Ada for me. So I just have to literally um, sew it onto some scroll rods and, and I'm ready to go. Though I don't have the DMC yet, so I will have to, I will have to get that. So yeah, that's what I was up to the last couple of days. I did put a few stitches into my, um, Miss Margaret Ann Rollo, uh, 1867, the sampler chart from Krista Gramer of Just Stitching Along. I did put, I have now com fully completed the top 
row of the alphabet and I have started, I've done the M and the N. No, I, actually I've done the M, N, O, and P, but I don't have it upstairs here to show you today. So I'll save that till tomorrow and I'll share that with you tomorrow. All right, so I am back to working today. Uh, those of you who know about the, the project bag business that I have, I started selling uh, some floss by uh, Indie Dyers Leo and Roxy, the Leo and Roxy Yarn Co. They now make floss, but it's very, very limited. I'm going to be the only one selling it, and uh, Carrie, Carrie, who is one of the pair, uh, Carrie and Jo Lynn are the dyers behind Leo and Roxy. They are also the owners of the Little Red Mitten Yarn Shop in St. Thomas, Ontario. Carrie has become a stitcher and um, as well as a ph phenomenal knitter as well. And her color sense is incredible. And Carrie has, um, she's started dyeing floss. And so the Leo and Roxy floss, those are the original four colors that I have up here that um, I sold as an initial bundle along with a project bag set. I will have more of the original four colors coming. When I have them, they will be, I will be offering some for sale without a project bag. They will just, the floss will be for sale by itself. Um, and I will also have four new colors coming. So this is sometime in January. I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to have it um, because it is small batch, because um, it is done by one woman um, and she at the moment is awaiting heart surgery. Uh, Carrie, if you want to know more about Carrie's story, you can watch Carrie and Jo Lynn. They have their own podcast. Um, you can look it up on YouTube. They are the Little Red Mitten. I'll try to remember to leave a link down below. They have a wonderful podcast. Their, their friendship is really nice to watch. They are clearly a really good team um, in what they do when they work together. And so it's been really a pleasure to get to know Carrie better. And I look forward to hopefully next year in 2021, getting to know JoLynn a little bit better as well. Um, so Carrie has become a stitcher. And uh, so that brings me around to talking about the Virlon sampler, which is talking about my 2021 plans because the Virlon sam sampler by uh, Histerisch Stickmuster, and you can find it on the Silk Stitching app, which is available at the moment only for iOS devices. But if you would like to stitch this sampler, I've shown it several times over the last couple of weeks, um, and I will be sharing more once I get closer to when I'm going to be starting it. Uh, I'm going to be using two shades of blue and the colors that are coming from Carrie in January, there's going to be four shades of blue. And I would like to, I would like to stitch my Virulance sampler with Carrie's floss. And so that's why there is going to be a little bit, I, it's, I want, I would love to start it on January 1st, but that's just not going to happen. And I don't want to rush Carrie. Um, she has, she has, you know, big things on her mind. And so whenever she's ready to go with the floss, I will, you will be the first to know that I have it and, uh, and when it will be available. But that's why my start's going to be delayed because that's the, that's what I really want to use. Oh, my battery light's flashing. Hang on. Let me just switch this out. There we go. Back again. Uh, so yes, the floss and the Virlon sampler as soon as I have my supplies, I will be ready to go. Um, the other piece that I want to start in January is the Modern Folk Embroidery 2021 Stitch Along. And that is, of course, Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. I, ha I still haven't watched his... He put out a second floss tube episode. I still haven't watched it. I've kind of been saving it for when I had... Um, some quiet time to myself to uh, sit and enjoy it. J Jacob's videos, his work is just, it's so amazingly beautiful. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to finally being able to watch that. So I'm really excited to stitch his, his, it's not a mystery stitch along. He's already posted a photo of what it's going to look like. It's drop jaw, it's, it, it's gorgeous. It's so, so beautiful. And uh, I still haven't, I know which version I want to do. I want to do the two color version and I just haven't, I haven't quite nailed down fabric and floss because 
I was really hoping to use fabric from my stash, but I'm not sure I have a big enough piece, which astonishes me because I was sure that I had some massive pieces of, of stash fabric, but I can't find anything that's just right, which means I'm going to have to order some more fabric, which, you know, I think my head, let me just lower this down a little bit there funny you look at yourself and you think I'm down here and you're way up there so that may be a little bit better anyways I know and I'm wearing uh, this shirt I've been wearing this shirt a lot since I bought it because I love it it's cozy it's that sort of flannelette fabric and the weather's been really cold and snowy outside and this is like the coziest thing that I own at the moment so that's why you're seeing me in it again and that and I hate shopping for clothes so I always wear the same thing which I'm sure you've noticed by now but oh well okay so I have one last thing to tell you about today and that has to do with the auctions I'm running some auctions over on my Instagram page a la Michelle Bendy just like she used to do She's taking a little break from her Instagram auctions, so I thought I would step in this month in December, um, and and I'm using those auctions to raise funds for Muscular Dystrophy Canada. And just a side note before I tell you about, I've got two new auction items that I'm going to be putting up today. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to... Now, I did not ask if I could uh, name this don't this donor so i i'm going to leave them anonymous for now however this morning i received an email from a viewer who said that um they they don't they're not on instagram but they wanted to help with the fundraising and made a 75 dollar canadian donation to muscular dystrophy canada and they were hoping that i would add that to our monthly total which of course I am doing that. So as of last week, we were sitting at about $1,254 and we are adding in a $75 donation from this anonymous donor that uh, once again, a huge thank you. And it's just been, it's been a wonderful month of, you know, generosity from the community. Holly, Holly, uh, Sylvia, another donor who donated a clay by kim needle minder and that's just off the top of my head if it's just been phenomenal the the kindness and it's been a really great way to end this year for me to to just be inspired by those of you who are just um and not just people who donated items but people who bid on the items people who shared the information that these items were available you know, people who liked the video and, and maybe, you know, learned a little bit something about Muscular Dystrophy Canada. It's just been, it's been, uh, it's been a great month for that. And I, I just wanted to say thank you again. So, uh, the patterns are still available. The, the Flossmas 2020 pattern is still available on Patty Breaks Etsy shop for boys and a Newfoundland girl. There is a link to it in the drop down box below. The pattern for this month's Ornament is $5 Canadian, 50% of that is donated to Muscular Dystrophy Canada. And the auctions, this is the last week of auctions, Wednesday, so today's Monday. So Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the auctions will end. And that money will, again, all of those auction items, the money is directly donated from the bidder to, Musk, to MDC. And then the item that you win is sent to you once I have um, a photographic proof of your donation so that's how it works I have two very special items to add in today so again this is going to be shorter time frame than the original items that I put up last Wednesday but we're gonna add them in so that we can just raise just a few more dollars for this month so the two items that I have I have Holly once again sent me an email and she said oh well what about this how can you use this for your auction and oh my goodness you guys okay so let me let me show you something okay because there's there might be some of you out there who have never seen this so this right here and if you've been with me for a while you'll recognize this <laughs> and you will have seen it a lot because 
I worked on this for a few years. It took me a long time to complete and it shouldn't have, but it did and that's okay. It's all good. This is counted canvas. So this is a slightly different um, embroidery than it's not cross stitch. It's called counted canvas and you work it on a canvas. So it's a different uh, material that you use to do the stitching on and the stitching itself is a little bit different. So I'm going to bring it up nice and close so that you can see. So the thread types that we use are different. The stitches, some of them are long, some of them are shorter and combined together. It just makes a really beautiful design. Now this is, um, this chart is called Starry Skies and it's by um, a really popular counted canvas designer from Nancy's Needle. And I think this is a quilt series. So the, there are quilt blocks that, that make up these, um, this particular collection of patterns. These are very accessible for new canvas stitchers. The instructions in the From Nancy's Needle charts are wonderful. I like, I really, I can't recommend, they don't know who I am. So I'm not just, I'm not being paid to say this, but they are really, really well done. The instructions are super clear, very easy to understand. Even if you've never done it, I would say that you could, if you spent, you know, some time reading through the instructions. I've put out a couple of videos, any video, like a stitch with me video that has, um, they used to, I used to call them Friday off the grid. That's how the Facebook groups got started. And I used to do a stitch with me video. Um, my eyesight doesn't really allow me to do that anymore. It's a long story, but anyways, um, any stitch with me video that has this in the cover, I talk quite a bit about how to do certain things. So if that interests you at all, just look for this. And I know you have to scroll I'll I'll try to find one or two and link them down below. If I forget and you can't find it and you really want to know, just leave me a comment and ask and remind me. So counted canvas and it's just so fun and it's so pretty and really I should have been done it in about a month because it's super fast once you get going, but it can be hard on the hand. So I found that because you get quite addicted to it and if I would overdo it, I would really feel it in my hand because you're pulling that needle through um, a stiffer fabric. So you really have, it, it takes a bit more of a grip. And I know I could alleviate part of that by using a thimble, you know, like a leather strip on my thumb or my middle finger to help grip the needle. But I was always so lazy, I would never go and find it. And I would never keep one in my project bag. So my own fault, totally my own fault. However, Holly is donating a complete counted canvas kit, completely kitted up, everything that you need to stitch it. And it is called Winter Sky, I think. I've, I've already got the photos loaded into the video. You'll see the photos at the end of this video. If you stick around all the way to the end, there's a little um, photo show of all the auction items and the counted canvas uh, kit. You've got everything, even the stretcher bars, the stretcher bars, the fabric, the pattern, all the floss, all of the threads needed to stitch the design. And it's not this one. I'm sorry. It's not this one, but you know what? The colors are very similar. So I think it's called winter sky. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And again, it's another from Nancy's needle, uh, chart. So I'm pretty confident that if you're, um, if you're a curious, multi-crafter who's pretty good at following basic instructions or you're pretty good at you know searching out YouTube videos on how to do certain things you will have no problem doing this it's really really easy I'm not sure it comes with a needle so you may have to buy a pack of needles I use a I think I usually use a 22 either a 20 or a 22 tapestry needle when I when I uh, work on canvas work so love it. So that's item one. The second and final item for the auctions this month, you guys. Okay. It is those of you who know Michelle Bendy, she, Michelle messaged me last week and she said, there's something I want to, I want to put in the auction. Am I too late? Am I too late? And I said, well, no, because I think on Monday I, I had just found out about this canvas kit 
by um, being offered by Holly and I said well I'm gonna put something up on Monday so you know what what would you like to, to donate <sighs> you guys so if you watch Michelle you probably already also know about Diana it is kismet stitches on YouTube and also Instagram Diana is just a wonderful big-hearted amazing stitcher and if she's in your life you're better off for it because she's just a she's a great human and she is also a multi crafter and she has made this amazing project bag that comes with multiple bags inside it okay so it's almost like imagine like a file folder of whips so it's it's got the outer covers and then on the inside there are um, like separate vinyl zippered pouches for like four projects it's incredible like I've never seen anything quite like it it's really really unique and it looks pretty cool so I'm not quite sure I, I've asked Michelle um, I should have just asked Diana but it was Michelle who is offering the item so I wanted to know where should I start the bidding at but also I wanted to find out whether Diana is selling these um, you know as well because if she is I think I might like to order one because it looks pretty cool and well I'd like to support a, a fellow maker so um, those are the two new items up for auction today. Today is Monday, December the 28th. This auction will be ending on Wednesday, December the 30th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. These, once again, just like all of the other items, it has been much easier for me just to make these a bid what you want item because that way I think we can, it, it seems to be the best way to get the maximum um, amount for for Muscular Dystrophy Canada. So I hope that that's okay. That um, it's not, I'm not, I haven't been doing, since the first week where it was a bid in $1 increments, I've just made all of the other auction items bid what you want. And uh, I think it's worked, I think it's worked fairly well. So it's been, it's been a great month. So look for those items up later today. Again, they are on my personal Instagram page, which is at Off The Grid Needle Arts. And, um, There you go. I think that's it. I think I I really did. I really honestly thought today was going to be 10 minutes long because I thought I don't have much to say today, but clearly I had a lot to say. Clearly. My mother that makes my mother laugh too. She says, "You say these you say at the beginning it's going to be short and it's never short." <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, all right, I am going to uh, get going. I have I have quite a bit more sewing to do this afternoon and some bags to package up. And I'm hoping to get one box um, out the door, FedEx box of orders out by tomorrow. And then the next box of orders will be going out next week in the new year. 2021, right around the corner. And I know I was gonna tell you today about my not plan plans, but I think I'm gonna have to save that until tomorrow because I think I'm going to be a little bit, I'm going to be quite chatty about it and I could easily add another half an hour onto this video and I just, I'm, I'm out of time. I need to get back to work this afternoon. So I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you're well. I hope that you're safe and that you have had a relaxing few days uh, over the holidays, whatever you celebrate and that you have a little bit of time this evening for a few minutes of personal crafting just for yourself and I will see you tomorrow so take care and happy stitching <music>